Hey everybody, welcome back to Coyote Ridge. Um, this evening, I just want to go over a few of my favorite items that I've collected uh, over the past couple years or so. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see, we'll start with you know, little pouches like this. Uh, they're so handy for you know compartmentalizing your gear uh, anything that you want to make out of some of them will even come with the uh, velcro patch deals on that you can get patches to to label different things i'd like to have some of those but here in this one i just kind of have some some food items for work uh, you know if uh, I don't take anything else for lunch. I've got a couple of little things to snack on. But you see, they got a lot of them have multiple pockets. So, you know, they work out pretty good. They also have some of them come with straps. This one came with a strap, so you could just carry this, you know, as a little small kit. But that's that's one of my uh, my favorites. Is just getting any kind of little pouch, you know, something that you can throw, you know, make it a different kit for each of your five C's and throw them in a haversack or something, uh, throw, throw them in your, your, your bag, your pack, and just roll with it. <coughs> see. Um, Cover-wise, you know, I like the, the Schmog. Uh, they're real handy. Uh, I decided to go with a uh, military style poncho. They're just so versatile. You can use it for actually as a poncho. You can set it up as shelter, uh, makeshift uh, bivy, sleeping bag. Uh, some of them come in these nice little pouches all ready to go. You can even put you some tie lines in there, uh, some extra cordage so that it's all set up. It would even fit in one of these packs. <clears throat> Let's see. Another, uh, another favorite I've found is uh, Expedition Research had sent me some items to test out and try. And this is the original Bushcraft grill set. And this is a really nice set. Comes in this pouch, you know. And you have a larger rack. And these are built really, really strong. Really good. Really good welds on them. This is going to hold up for years and years. It's a really good one. But the set actually comes with the small one also, as you can see, it's about half the size, probably exactly half the size of the larger one. So, you know, it can fit in if you wanted to just make this part of a smaller pack, you could. Say like that back pocket there, it would fit right in there. And you could have a whole cook kit in one of them pouches. <clears throat> but these are really neat. You can see this in probably a couple of my videos. The one titled Elevate Your Fire, where I actually built a fire in the fork of a tree. Uh, well, I didn't build a fire, I think I used a, I actually used one of their Expedition Research's uh, fuel tablets. I like keeping some of these. I'll either keep them in one of these little boxes or I'll take them out. And you can uh, think there comes like four in, you know, four of them together. You can split these, break these down into two or singles or whatever. I always keep a couple of the single ones I've cut out in my canteen pouch. So I've always got a quick, easy way I can light a fire to purify water or heat up something to eat and they are super handy 
So let's see, next, next price, speaking about canteens and canteen pouches and stuff, I picked up one of these Swiss uh, canteen kits. I was, I'd been looking at the older version of this, but uh, most of those have a cork lid, they're, they're real old ones, but I love the, uh, the size of them. So I, I end up going ahead and trying one of these, and I really do like it. It's uh, it's a really good compact size for uh, you know like an everyday carry kit. The uh, the canteen itself, it it you know it doesn't have that shape of, of a USGI one. It just stands out and screams military to people. And that where it's black instead of green, it it just uh, it's easy to pass off as you know just any kind of little old canteen. But the cup to it, it's a lot smaller than your USGI cups. It makes it a much easier drinking size, uh, you know, compared to a coffee cup. Pretty much the same size, just a little different shape. So, so it just it feels right, and though it's small, it's still a container. It's still a container that you could uh, boil water in or heat up something to eat in. So, uh, speaking of uh, heating, another one of my favorite pieces of gear is an alcohol stove. This is probably the cheapest representation of an alcohol stove you're going to find. You can get these for just two or three dollars from places like Wish. They're, they've got a screw on lid to them. You just open them up, you pour your fuel in there, and there's so many different sources of fuel you can use. You can use any kind of alcohol in them. You can use uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl. You can use uh, denatured alcohol. You can you can use the alcohol that you drink. You know, a, a high proof vodka or something. You can also use gas line antifreeze in it, like the heat gas line antifreeze, because it is just a form of alcohol. And uh, of course, they recommend not using the red bottle because of the additives in it. The yellow bottle works fine and burns hot. I mean, you're not going to be eating anything out of this. You're going to be cooking over, you know, in a container over top of it. So, but yeah, that is, I, I really like the alcohol stoves. <clears throat> I do have a folding type stove, triangular, that I've used in a few videos. And uh, that worked out really good, too, with either the alcohol stove or the fuel tablets. Staying with, uh, you know, boiling water, purifying water, and eating, probably one of my favorite pieces of gear I have is this bush pot. This is just a really good size for one or two people. Uh, it's got the bale on it. It's got the butterfly handles. It's got a spout with it, so if you just wanted to heat water, make coffee or whatever, you can easy to pour, or you can cook out of it. It's got a recessed lid, so if you wanted to bake something in it, you could put stack hot coals in there. And it's just a really good size. It's a, it's just a really good pot. Inside of it, actually, you know. It's always good to any space you have in your containers to fill them with other things. I've got another good little piece of gear is these little UGI cups, stainless steel cups. You can get these at Walmart for like five dollars each and they're just super handy. Uh, I'm not big on the long elongated handles on them but it, it works good for you know reaching in over a fire or something you know keep from burning yourself but they're just super handy and uh, 
you can't get lids for them at Walmart but you can easily find a tin can that's the right size to fit on it and just take you some bit of hardware of some kind to make you a little handle for it and I've heated stuff right in this uh, makes it a like a little mini bush pot it's it's really it's really handy to have and for the price you can't beat it the price on these little bush pots uh, this was the under the name camel wheel when I got it I saw the price of them have went up quite a bit since I bought mine but I also see they're coming out in other names a lot of these just come from China and uh, you know they're always releasing them under other names and you can get them cheaper so just shop around and find it in uh, you know in the brand that the, is the cheapest because they're basically all the same okay and also in my cook kits you know you want to have some kind of eating tool uh, this is a uh, spoon and fork combination actually even a bit of a knife combination there's a serrated edge on the fork I uh, got this from the Pathfinder store Dave Canterbury store this thing is just built like a tank this would outlast me or you uh, so you know it's going to be dependable it's not going to break I do pick up those plastic ones from Walmart the USGI ones or whatever they're called uh, I think they got another named UGI or something like that but uh, this is like the go to one this is built to last and clean it up a million times <clears throat> so other than those you know I get into uh, my fire making or, or my cutting tools um, of course I always like to keep uh, if you're gonna put a lighter in your kit which everybody sh should have usually you just go pick up a disposable lighter and if you're gonna do that pick up a big they're gonna be the best they're gonna last the longest but I like carrying a Zippo as well the uh, benefit of a Zippo is long term you can refill this and it, you can use a number of different fuels uh, you don't have to just get the Zippo lighter fluid bottles I fill mine out of uh, a large can of uh, camp oil it's the same stuff you know you're just getting more for your money a little bit harder to pour but you know if you wanted to use a big syringe draw it out and make it easier but I can refill this a million times as long as I've got uh, flints to put back in it then I'm good to go <clears throat> now cutting tools I like having multiple knives uh, a pocket knife is essential you always have in your pocket with folding pocket knives honestly I prefer Swiss Army knives they're kind of just the original multi-tool I like having some of them that have the little saw blade in them. Those are great. I've got one. It's not a Victorinox. It's off brand, but it's still a, a good knife. Um, but you know, as long as they have a few features on them, the uh, screwdriver, the bottle cap, the can opener, uh, blade, uh, different things, they're just wonderful to have. Uh, nice little multi-tool to carry around with you and a little cutting tool <clears throat> for lighter stuff you know um, getting into a little bit heavier duty uh, one that I've got that I've found myself carrying a lot uh, the size the concealability you wear it on a belt it hugs close to your body uh, it's a good quality knife do suggest you try if at all possible to get a good quality knife that you can you know that you can depend on that's not gonna dull super fast or chip or break on you but the one I've been carrying a lot is the SE3 the uh, now they have a smaller version the Azula which you know would also be a good everyday carry I just I like the SE3 just uh, it's about the right size to cover multiple purposes 
and if this was the only knife you had in a survival situation you'd be fine they're kind of thinner than what we usually would call a survival knife but they are tough there's been a lot of tests people have done with these with batani and everything they do just fine um, but they're a real good slicer uh, they come super sharp it's been really easy to keep this super sharp after I cut a few things with it I strop it and it's staying it, hair popping sharp right now Uh, lastly would be uh, more of my heavier duty knife one that uh, you wouldn't care a bit to baton with because it's going to take it and beg for more is the K-Bar BK2 uh, this is one that I'm not sure if any of you have seen my videos on this I got it they come with the black plastic uh, scales and it's a coated blade and but a lot of people do like I did they strip them down and kind of you know make them their own <clears throat> so that's what I did uh, I mean look at the spine on that I mean, you're, you know quarter inch steel there and they're tough but any any video you watch on these you're gonna you know, see how tough they are and you can get them pretty reasonably sharp you know if you spend some time on it even being that thick of a blade but this this right here is go after the big stuff with it I picked up a uh, leather scout carry sheath for it uh, on the sheath you'll see I have a ferro rod ferro rods probably my favorite way of starting a fire because it makes you follow proper fire building discipline you know getting your down to your finest curls and, and all that to get a fire started that would be beneficial even if you have a lighter it's going to save your fluid it's going to ensure that you get a fire done if you use proper techniques <clears throat> I do keep in this I had just done an update video on this knife and it would show you everything that I've got in this uh, so I'm not going to go into all of it but you do see some cordage on there uh, two main types of cordage I like are paracord and bank line uh, but one that I always include in kits anytime I get a chance just because it takes up no space and the benefits of it are, are well worth it it's always some fishing line. It's a uh, fishing line's tough, uh, but if you got fishing line hooks, a couple sinkers, then you can pretty much be guaranteed something to eat. So, guys, those are my uh, kind of my favorites as as of now. And if these change in the future, I'll probably make another video. Uh, you know, go on subscribe to the channel like comment let me know what your favorites are if there's something that you found that you like or if there's something that you'd like me to try um, you can always reach out to me at coyote ridge at gmail coyote ridge outdoors at gmail and uh, and speak to me personally on it and uh, if there's anything you'd like to send for me to test out uh, just let me know until next time, guys, we'll see you later.